Hey guys. Yes, it is me. I am back in the flesh. Very happy to be back uh, from my mini vacation that my beautiful wife and I took for our anniversary. We enjoyed some very much deserved R&R. &R, and if you follow me on IG, then you would have seen at least a glimpse of it. A very, very small glimpse of it. But I'm back and I am more tanned than I've ever been in my life and feeling rejuvenated and ready to go. Now, just because I was going for a couple of days doesn't mean that I was out of the loop completely. And I happened to see that there was this war of the worlds going on on social media between two content creators. And it basically had the internet, well, really one, really one content creator going at another, but you know, whatever, it, between two content creators. And it basically had the internet in a, in an uproar, right? A sort of civil war, so to speak. Every now and again, you have what I like to call content wars between creators. And, and basically what content wars are is when a creator essentially accuses another content creator of stealing their content, content ideas, content aesthetics, whatever, right? The other creator hears about this and then denies and then it goes back and forth from there. And ultimately it leaves fans or supporters, you know, in between, like in, in the crossfire a little bit. And they're kind of left to pick a side. And in today's video, I'm going to dive deep into a situation that deals with South African food TikToker Onezwa Mbola, I believe that's her name, and TikTok and TikTok food influencer, I can't even fucking talk, Nara Smith. Now, this war started when Onezwa made a TikTok video essentially calling out Nara for allegedly stealing her cooking ideas and replicating her content style for views. Now, Onezwa deleted her first TikTok, like the original TikTok, explaining her frustration with Nara stealing her content from TikTok, but I obviously found it, and here you go. For months now, I have watched a very, very popular content creator use my ideas. And again, I'm not the first person to do anything. They have continuously used my ideas to get views. Now, that would be fine, except in South Africa, we don't get paid for views. And where she is, they get paid for views. So she has been making money off stealing my content managed to change the videos just enough so that I cannot say that they are my ideas and when I took a break from content creation recently she then went and moved on to my YouTube and started using ideas from my YouTube so I have kept quiet for months at a time just venting to my boyfriend and to my friends and they've all told me just let it go because you are going to be dragged by her mob of followers and you will get cancelled and so i've kept quiet and recently i made a boba tea we all saw it we all loved it and i was so very 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 proud of that video i tweeted about it i was so excited for it and then a day later she made a boba video and you might say it may be a coincidence. That would be fine if it was a coincidence, except it's a coincidence that happens very often. So is it really a coincidence? I am very disheartened. I am very disheartened because she's making thousands of dollars in views. And I am lucky to get a brand collaboration every three months. Now after she deleted this video, she then uploaded another video, basically uh, dragging everyone. And she chose violence in this video. She chose like, you know, Deadpool Wolverine level violence in this video. That's all I'm going to say. Take a look. Which simply translates to you're not money. Not everyone is going to like you. And so likability has never been something I yearned for. If I wanted to be liked, I would have been less outspoken about the things I believe in. I would have kept my opinions to myself, held my tongue, and chosen neutrality in my political beliefs, all in order to be liked and more palatable. And even then, someone would have hated the way I hold my knife or that my wooden spoons are stained because you never win 
the likability politics. I may be all these things, but I'm not a liar. And fortunately, your feelings about me do not alter the truth. I do not mince my words. If I said it, trust me, I will stand by it. Nara Smith was making kale salads with lemon juice and olive oil before she started stealing content ideas from small content creators. Now, I know she's not slow, and she intentionally misconstrued what I said with the comment about not being the first to make boba because she knew you would run with it, and gallop you did. Man, okay. So, here we go, y'all. <laughs> so, Onezwa here, just to give a brief cliff note here about, you know, her content, she is a South African TikToker who primarily makes content where she makes meals from scratch. And when I say from scratch, I mean like she goes out, you know, picks the vegetables, right? She grows her own stuff. She goes out, gets the chicken. She kills it, takes the guts out, skins it, chops it up, cooks it, everything from scratch. And she's been doing that for quite some time. I believe uh, her earliest videos where she said from like 20. 2019 so that's when she kind of started putting it out there and her content for the most part is soothing and she is in a uh you know she shares like her rural life or her farm life with her followers and in this video she calls out nara smith who is a very well-known tiktoker she's a model she has german and south african heritage from what i understand and you know she's you know she makes similar content right except her content has a very different aesthetic to it you know a different appearance to it so to speak she has more of an upscale look to her videos right she wears expensive dresses and she pretty much has like this air of luxury you know to the type of content that she produces now i've been familiar with you know nara smith right i don't watch every video she puts out but you know i am familiar with her because every now and again the internet makes it a point to uh, you know drum up something to hate on her for and i honestly never really care to dig deep enough in the trenches to find out but this situation was just too massive right just too big to ignore so in the video you can tell that she's not happy to say the least she's very upset and you can hear it all in her voice she starts talking about respectability politics first and then she says that she's not a liar and you know it says that if she says something you know she meant it she gonna stand on it 10 toes down you know she then proceeds to double down on her nara smith accusation from before in her original video that she deleted and says that nara was making different types of food before she started to steal content from her as well as from smaller content creators now she does go into a more specific situation in which she refers to a video where onezwa claimed that nara stole another content idea where she decided to make boba tea. Take a look. Well, uh, that looked good as hell. Now, here's Nara Smith's video that Onezwa claims she stole from her. Take a look. Now, as you can see, they both made boba tea and you know side note i actually do fuck with boba tea i like it you know ever since my wife put me onto it i've really been like you know going going crazy after it but anyway that's beside the point now what's interesting about this situation is that onezwa posted her video going through how she made her tea on june 10th and nora made her her video on the 12th that's literally two days later very interesting timing i will say right but it doesn't really prove anything except that they both like making tea <laughs> like, but there are a lot of people out there that are very adamant in saying that they both like that nara has been doing this sort of thing for a long time where she will post very similar recipes 
after Onezwa posts hers and that the timeline is pretty clear in regards to the timing of Nara's videos in comparison to Onezwa's. Now, when Nara was questioned about this on Instagram, she claimed that she never even heard of Onezwa. You know, she don't really know her like that. She don't follow her and that she's, you know, never really seen Onezwa's content like that or any of her videos and that she ain't the first or the last person to make boba. Now, that last part is very understandable. She isn't the first or the last to do this, but it's that first half that is getting Nara into some some hot water and some trouble. And it's it's that part of her not knowing anything about Onezwa and her content and she really shot herself in the foot with with that whole thing because it it didn't take long for the internet slews out there right the internet detectives you know to look back into the annals of time and see that not only does nara know of onezwa but she even left comment a, a comment in 2019 telling her how inspiring her content was that is and will always be a red flag when these types of conversations take place because here you are you know caught in 4k where you clearly acknowledge onezwa right in her content and now since you got caught in this sort of lie your credibility is looking very shaky to a lot of people to say the least to do anything after i said that seven million times in that same video i understand that some of you may be victims of angel's education system and some of you were the children who were actually living to understand might be a challenge i can sympathize with that pattern and recipe may sound the same to you nara it is very apparent that you're not the first person to make boba because i think the first person who made boba tea to drink through a straw made sure that the boba could actually fit through the straw damn this video is sounding like a cannon because the shots are very loud and very clear in this she said that some of y'all are the children that were actually left behind so listening to understand might be a challenge and that she can sympathize with it was a filthy diabolical burn to basically all of the haters and people saying bad things you know uh, about her calling out nara then turns right back around and claps back at nara for saying that she wasn't the first to make boba tea and you know says that she knows she ain't the first one but at least the person who invented boba tea actually made sure that boba could could actually fit through the straw which i gotta say is pretty hilarious seeing as how in nara's video you didn't actually see the boba go through the straw because they were too big. <laughs> so, you know, she was stepping on next with this one. And for you all asking if I credit everybody, if you find a pattern of me stealing ideas, feel free to call me out because I know very well I have a great track record of mentioning people who inspire my cooking. And I do use my little platform to bring attention to other creators who I feel deserve to have their talents celebrated. Over the past two days, I've taken the time to remind myself why it was that I started creating content. I wanted to document my journey of recreating meals my mother cooked for me. It was a hobby, an outlet, and that is the reason I was so reluctant to monetize it. I wasn't collaborating with brands, I wasn't tagging or reaching out to them because I knew if I did, I would lose all the joy I found in this. I'm disappointed in myself that I lost sight of why I started this and that I thought someone could take it away from me. So two things are going to happen. One. I'm going to keep creating the videos of these meals you've all told me look unappetizing and you do them in your sleep. And two, Nara Smith is going to stop stealing content ideas. A win-win. And to the South Africans who have continuously undermined and disrespected me throughout this whole thing, your classism hasn't gone unnoticed. I hope my videos remind you that your reality is closer to mine than it is to this American dream you're gallantly fighting for. Sheesh! She really left no stone unturned with this video and she set it off with this. Now, after that whole thing went viral, it was on every blog for the most part and definitely gained a lot of traction. And then on Twitter, Onezwa claimed that Nara and her legal team were threatening to sue for uh, defamation. And she and if she didn't take down the videos uh, accusing her of stealing now, she showed these tweets a few days ago and showed the letter that Nara allegedly sent her. Now, just by me sitting here looking through this letter, you know, I am in no way a paralegal. I'm no lawyer. I'm not a judge. I'm just a black man who ate cinnamon toast crunch this morning. 
And I must say that this letter is screaming bullshit to me because it's signed as Nara Smith. And from my knowledge of how cease and desist work, I'm 100% sure that cease and desist letters come from the lawyers or whatever legal counsel this person has not themselves <laughs> like you know and, and also the fact that there were you know some some errors apparently in this letter and I, i'm being generous by saying a few uh let's just take a look at what some people you know had to say about this letter y'all don't like nara smith fine but i need y'all to be fucking for real because there is no way in hell that she sent onezwa this email and you know how i know because there's a typo right in the middle of it the videos in question are not my original creations, and I have all the necessary proof of this on the social media platform Tick Space Talk. So Nara Smith can spend hours making Cocoa Puffs from scratch, but she couldn't spend 20 seconds to proofread this email? Y'all really think that a woman that can afford to wear Chanel straight off the runway doesn't have an entire legal team to send cease and desist on her behalf? Well, it makes perfect sense to me. And and, and to me, this looks like it was sent by like a troll or, or someone looking to keep this drama going because from what I've seen, Nara hasn't really made any official statement or, or anything grand you know, really talking about the situation in depth. And to be honest, I don't think she ever will because what does she gain from doing that? So now that this whole, you know, thing is out the way, right? I pretty much kind of laid the groundwork for what I'm talking about. You know, let, let's get to my take on this and, and what I feel about this overall situation. Now, after watching both of their content, I will say that Onezwa's claim of Nora stealing her content is pretty ridiculous. And it's something that people all over the world on social media have done at one point or another. And, you know, every single day there is someone who can come on here and claim that someone stole their content. This is the fucking Internet. You name me an original movie at this point. And I know, you know, there's going to be a, a divisive take, right? Because, you know, like I said, there's a civil war on this issue going on right now. So I know I'm, I'm going to receive some hate for this, but it is what it is, right? Um, you know, you name me an original movie at this point, even Hollywood recreates films from the past or from a book or even a real life situation that happened. People are going to watch content from other creators that they like and be inspired by their content, recreate it in a different way and put their special little twist on it. Onezwa's style of content is simply different from the style of content that Nara Smith makes i can't make it no simpler than that y'all onezwa seems like she's you know she's from like an area in south africa where she grew up having to make her meals the way that she makes them in her videos nara smith although she may have south african blood did not have that experience and so she's creating the content in a way that she feels is good for her and her audience i also have this question why doesn't onezwa come out and call out all of the other thousands of content creators who have made boba tea or soup or or you know lemonade or what anything like that and claim that they stole from her too it just seems to me that she chose to go after nara because she is the one garnering a lot of the views and she has a lot of followers she's making the money let's just say that nara is inspired by onezwa and and other content creators to make the same dishes right let's just say for shits and giggles that she is taking it it still doesn't matter <laughs> because the finished product still looks different and the people like that her audience likes that nara gives a different feel when nara's in the kitchen doing her thing she's got on the nice dresses dripped out in chanel right you know fancy shit she got the nice kitchen fancy pots and pans and, and all that people like that Nara has a lot of people that love her. And with that comes a lot of people who can't stand that and can't wait until something comes along to try and tear that person down. This was yet another thing that the Nara Smith hate train needed to go and try to cancel her for. Hell, some of the followers that she has, some of them follow her, watch every single thing she posts just to turn around at the slightest hint of something and attack her for it. When there is minimal evidence at best of her stealing anything. It's hearsay. He says, she said. Keyboard assassins on Twitter who just need something to latch on, grab onto in order to go after someone they don't like for whatever parasocial reason they 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 want. If she did take on Nezwa's content, she redid it in her own Nara Smith way. I believe the One that Onezwa is making a big stink about this because she's not getting paid for it. Because, you know, apparently the fact that 
she lives in South Africa. Apparently, you know, she's not able to, uh, you know, make money off of her content, you know, and if that's the case, move your content over to a platform where you can monetize it, move it over to Facebook here on YouTube, which, you know, I believe she does. She does have a YouTube by the way, but you know, move it over to platforms like that and see how the content performs. Then I just don't understand how people who call themselves influencers are upset that people were influenced by them to do what they do. It, it makes no sense to me. It would be one thing if Nara was just straight up taking your videos, right? Just straight up taking your shit and reposting it on her channel. And she blew up off of that. Onezwa would a thousand percent be justified in calling it out. But that's not what's happening here. That's like someone calling me out for speaking on this topic right now and saying that I'm stealing their videos because they're also talking about the same thing. See how stupid that is? How many of you have done the exact same thing where you see a review of someone making a cheeseburger or, or you know, a recipe of someone making a cheeseburger, you know, online and you go and try to recreate that same cheeseburger at home? Some of you bookmark the recipe, save the video and, and go and do it at the crib. Does that content creator now have the right to come at you and accuse you of stealing their cheeseburger idea? So what's the issue here for real? And then there are people who are claiming that Nara changed her voice, you know, to sound like Onezwa with the whole soft speaking voice shit. And that's honestly annoying as hell to me because any everyone in their mama knows that ASMR is algorithm friendly and a lot of people like it. And it honestly just makes sense to do it with the style of content that they both make. Onezwa is simply mad, in my opinion, because she's not making the money that Nara's making and she's doing the same thing that she's doing. But that isn't Nara's fault that TikTok doesn't allow South Africans to be paid on their platform. Nara had nothing to do with that. You know, be mad at TikTok if you're going to be mad at somebody. Nara wasn't in the boardroom saying, hey, I don't want Onezwa and any other South African getting paid for making this type of content. I, I can assure you that didn't happen. Nara is lucky enough to be in a country or be in a place where she can be paid for the content she puts out. You can't. You can say it's unfair. You can cry about it. You can be mad about it. But going this route is just a losing road. It's, a, it's an unnecessary uphill battle that doesn't need to be climbed like you because even if nara sat by her phone every single day and all day looking at the content you post and, and then make a video the very next day with the same stuff it doesn't matter because she's doing it she's going about the content in her own way with her own aesthetic and for all of you Nara Smith haters out there because there's going to be a lot of you in the comment section you know and, and detractors that are so upset about this it really looks like from the outside looking in because i really don't have a dog in this fight i really could care less about the both of them but it really looks like a lot of you are looking for something to be mad about out of pure jealousy it just doesn't make sense because why are you upset it's one thing if onez would want to be mad or whatever but why are you mad that's like since we're talking about south africans right a lot of people watch that breakfast club interview with tyler right? Uh, the singer, she was on the breakfast club and she was talking about different things. Let's just say she goes on to hot 97 and, and, and does another interview. Would it make sense for the breakfast club to say that hot 97 is stealing content from them because they also decided to interview Tyler? No, they may have similar audiences, but at the end of the day, the people who watch the content, they watch for their own reasons and people gravitate toward the content creators. They feel like they relate to, they feel like make better styles of content, whatever. It's a million reasons, but competition is something that you can't get away from in this world. And there are going to be other people who have similar content to you. It's just, it is what it is. It makes no sense to try and go on a witch hunt and try to catch others who you think are stealing from you. Nara Smith is a woman who looks fancy and decides to make stuff from scratch, which is a different look from, you know, than Onezwa, right? Who, who makes content that she makes because she comes from a background where that style of cooking is pretty normal for her. And you know, both styles are great, but the delivery is different. Case in point, should the person who created Boba tea, should that person come and be upset at Onezwa and call her a thief and say that, you know, she's stealing their content. Would that make sense? Absolutely fucking not. It's on the internet. That means anyone can come out and recreate what they see. It's fair game. And my final thought on the 2019 comment, right? Because a lot of people obviously were bringing that up. I talked about that earlier in the video because a lot of people are latching onto that comment and I can see why, but let's just, let's just think about it for a second, right? Nara said that she was inspired by her content back in 2019. 
Fast forward to 2024 now. She says that she doesn't know Onezwa like that. Someone, you know, so someone could easily chalk that up to she didn't remember that she left that comment, right? Like she literally could just say that. So the question posed now is this, is nobody able to recreate the recipes that Onezwa puts out? Nobody at all. Let's, let's put that, let's stamp that right now in writing right now, because if that's the case, you should stop posting recipes on the internet from here on out and delete all of your videos on TikTok because if you post something on the internet, it runs the risk of someone seeing it, taking it, and recreating it in a better way. And that's the situation that we have here right now, point blank. And everyone throwing tomatoes at Nara, you know, have have wanted to do that from the start. It, it, it really seems that. Just wanting anything to say negatively about her. And it's showing itself to be the case right now. I could throw a rock and hit thousands of content creators who make this type of content. There's nothing new under the sun. A lot of people are literally wasting their time being mad at this. And I, I just, it just reeks of, of hate and a lot of jealousy. And it simply makes no sense. And from Onezwa's side, it just reeks of entitlement. You didn't create the internet, Onezwa. But wrapping this up, it seems that the underlying problem here is the fact that Onezwa is not getting paid from TikTok to produce the content she makes, but Nara is. That is not Nara's problem. Stop being mad about it. Pick yourself up and go about your business and monetize your content on other platforms. Try Patreon. Hell, put it up on OnlyFans. You can put other content on there besides your coochie, right? I don't know if people know that, but you can. But I really need people to stop with this entitled mentality that nobody else can do what I do. And if you do, then you're stealing from me. Ah, just relax. Woosha. Have a Coke and a smile and chill out. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I, you know, it's just something that I saw. It was just really, really crazy. But, you know, if, if, if you made it through this video, please smack a like, man. And also, don't forget to subscribe for the one time. Peace. Crazy.